All right, guys and girls, welcome to another episode of Astro Auto Repairs. <laughs> That's Harley running. Can you dig it? All right, guys, first of all, can you see Sivvy in my glasses? <laughs> yeah, buddy. All right, guys, today we got a 2007 Nissan Ultima right here. And today we're going to show you how to replace the right side drive axle. Coming up on Astro Auto Repairs. This channel is a member of the Astral Stars, which means we have a zero tolerance policy against the harassment of others. Anybody who violates that policy will be banned. For further information, please visit www.theastralstars.com. All right, guys, first things first, safety is number one. You see, I got my hydraulic jack here. We're jacking up the right side of the vehicle and I put my jack stand. Definitely get you a nice, safe jack stand to go up under there. And leave your hydraulic jack there as added security. All right, now, if I'm on concrete, so I'm cool, I'm cool, I'm good to go. But if you're on dirt, make sure you use a nice, thick piece of plywood, not particle board, plywood, to serve as a base for your jack stand. All right, guys, let's get ready to take this tire off. Now, check this next part coming up, guys. <laughs> well, we'll be right back. All right, guys, the first thing we're going to do is take off our tire. Now, well, no, actually, the first thing to do is jack it up and be secure. Second thing we're going to do is take off the tire. All right, you're going to get you a 21 millimeter deep, half-inch drive socket. You're going to have the five fog lug, nut, lug nuts. Put them up there, and then grab that, guys. Grab your half-inch drive. D-wall. <laughs> this is a nice Christmas present. Woo, look at the colors in there. Look at that bright yellow. Oh, my God. Goodness, is this a Merry Christmas to me? <laughs> Look at this guy. Oh, wait, wait a minute, guys. You gotta pick this thing up with two hands. Hold on, hold on, guys. Hold on, hold on, hold on, guys. <laughs> Alright, this is the first time using this tool, guys. Oh, man. Oh, man, let's, let's, let's see. Let's put this up here. You know, and it was cool, guys. The Harbor Freight one has the, uh, what's that, that, oh, they call it an anvil ring, a ring that, a metal ring that goes around to keep the socket on. And once you get on, you guys know what I'm talking about, once you get that on, you ain't getting it off. <laughs> that thing is impossible to get off. So this one is actually like a ratchet and all. Let's, 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 oh man, alright guys, here we go. This is the first bolt we taking off. Let's see. Oh man, did you see that guys? <laughs> You see that, Zimmy? <laughs> Dude, guys, look at what's... what's yeah, listen, listen to that. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Am I liking this, too? Oh, man, I'm going to the junkyard. I'm just take stuff off cars. Oh, man, guys, I'm digging this. All right, all right, let's, we got to get back to... Oh, man, I love this, too. <laughs> all right, all right, guys. Um, This is, uh, I think... 1,400, 1,200, 1,200 foot-pounds reverse, as they call it, nut-busting power. So 1,200 foot-pounds reverse, I think it's like seven or eight forward. If you can't, if you need something tight more than 700 foot-pounds, you got a problem, guys. <laughs> you got a problem, all right? So let's get that down, let's get our tire off, and we'll be right back. All right, guys, the next thing we're going to do is we're gonna take off two cotter pins. One for the outer tie rod, which is right here. And what you're going to do is grab you a pair of wire cutters. I got these. You can... Right behind it. Okay, okay, I got it. So wait, 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 wait. Dang it. Okay, we're good. Alright, so you just take that cotter pin. Bend the tabs. Back straight as you can. And if you want, you can try to tap it and see if it would come out. But usually they don't. So when it don't, on the other end over here, can you see that pretty good? The other end? Yeah. So you try to grab a little bit of that other one, other end, you squeeze it just a little bit, not to break it off, but squeeze it just a little bit, and just use that like a pry point, and continue going until you take that out. And it would be better if I had the flat ones, but... Okay, 
can't you just cut it and then get you a new one? It go, but this if it gets stuck in there. Oh. Yeah, oh. That's all you got to say? Oh. Alright, got that one out, throw it down. Then the one up here is the same way. This one comes out a little bit easier because it's a little bit big, thicker. So just... Bend one side straight. It'll start to come out. Use the axle as a like a prime point. Just take that out, and you're gonna you're gonna get new ones anyway. All right, we'll be right back. All right, guys, for this next step, you're gonna need two deep sockets, impact, half inch drive, or you use something else if you want, but it's gonna make it be more difficult. A 19 millimeter deep, which is gonna be the nut for the outer tie rod, and a 33 millimeter for the axle nut. Now that you got those. You know what to do. Pull out the... You gotta screw out the dewalt. Some of you just yelled at me because I started getting dirty. What the heck, what the heck am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to bake with this or something? What am I supposed to do? <laughs> she said, keep a rag with you. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I'll never do these jobs. Anyway, let's stop playing around, guys. Let's get the easy one first. <laughs> I'm liking this tool, man. Let's see. Oops. I was going tightening. You saw that thing tightening up? <laughs> you saw that thing tighten up? Oh my Hold goodness. On, I'm really blurry. Oh, you. <laughs> Hold on. I don't know what's going on. Okay. Was put the light behind you? No. Okay, okay, okay. We're good. All right. 19 millimeter. Let's get that one off. Man, that took it off. What's it? A washer in there. You gotta be careful. Put that washer back. All right. We got that off. Now for the 33 mill millimeter, the axle nut. Guys, you know these things are torqued to like 150 foot, foot pounds or something like that. <coughs> let's, let's see what we got here. Let's see what this can do. Oh, oh, oh man, there was like nothing. It took it off like it was a 10 millimeter bolt. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> All right, you got that nut off, guys? Now the next step is called shock and ore. What you gotta do is take this out of tie rod out of the spindle. Now, if you grab it by the hand, it's not gonna come off. So the method I told, told you, shock and ore. You hit the spindle right here hard enough with a hammer that it shocks that joint out of there. So, get you a nice hammer. Pop it right out just like that. Look how easy that was. All right, we'll be right back. All right, guys, for the next step, you're gonna need an 18 millimeter wrench and an 18 millimeter deep socket. You can turn your uh, spindle now because we took the tie rod out. So turn to the side and down here there's a nut and a bolt. You're, gonna, you're looking at the side with the nut on it. That's an 18 millimeter. So you're going to take it. Now I'm not sure. Your car it might be because you can put these bolts in either way. So yours might be the other way. But put your 18 millimeter wrench onto it to hold it in place. Turn it back to the other side. Get your 18 millimeter socket Oh, it's on the other side. Yeah, so now it's on the other side. Well. Uh, hold on. Okay, guys. We're going to go to the other side. We'll be right back. All right. We're on the other side. You got that 18 millimeter bolt. Grab your DeWalt. What if they don't have one? Then do not do this job. Do not do this job. Cut it out. You will not be able to do this job if you don't have a DeWalt. Stop it. All right. So we get the bolt right there. And. Take that bolt out. Take the nut off, take that bolt out, put the nut back on it so you know where it's at, and put it to the side, all right? We'll be right back. All right, guys, the next thing we're going to do, we have to take, this is our lower control arm right here, and we have to pull this lower control arm, here's the uh, ball joint, out of the spindle so we can pull the spindle out. Why we got to pull the spindle out like that? Because our axle is going right through here. There's no way we can take this axle out until we can get this axle out through here. So what we're going to do, first of all, you want to make sure this thing is kind of like you can push it a little bit, and I can't. That's stuck, because if you try to pull it out, you might damage something. So, if you're not going to reuse the axle, use a metal hammer. If you need to reuse that axle, use the rubber mallet. You saw how that bounce back in there, Sivvy? You see that? So now it's loose, guys. So, turn it all the way to the right. Get you a long pry bar. You want to pry. Damn it. 
here's your lower control arm right here. Here's your frame. You want to stick the pry bar in the frame anywhere in there like that. And the other end rests on top of the uh, lower, lower uh, control arm. Then you want to pull down. And you watch how it separates right at the joint right from the spindle. Yeah, buddy. When it gets all the way out, take your spindle and just pick it out. Just pull out just a little bit. Dang it. What the heck? Gotta go more. It won't let me go more. Well then. You kidding me? We are now into difficult. There it is. Oh, okay. Woof, man. Just like that, guys. Now, guys, the reason why we're changing this. Check this. Sometimes when you turn, when you're driving, you turn your wheel. You might hear click, 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 click. We're changing this because the inside boot is ripped. Now, you can, if you if you're cheap, you make cheap skate. What you can do is take the axle out, spend about five bucks, go online, you get a boot kit. The the boot. And then the grease and all. You know, just the axles are so cheap, do it that way. But I ain't gonna do it that way. We're gonna change the whole axle. So, we got that out the way now. What we do now, push our axle in right here. Then, we're gonna pull the spindle out off the axle. See, right now it's kind of difficult to hit that again. Alright, get that axle swung over to the side just like that. Man, that's gonna suck. That's gonna pull it. Alright, guys, we'll be right back. Alright, guys, the next thing to do is get you a drain pan. You wanna set your drain pan up right about in that position right there. Because if you can see way back there, you can follow this axle and you can see where it goes into the transmission. Yeah. <coughs> when we take that axle out, there might be some fluid come out. But first of all, guys, to hold on to this act, to take this axle out, we gotta remove these two 13 millimeter bolts. One right there, and then on the other side, there's another one. See that, Sivvy? Yes. All right, so guys, this is what you're gonna use. You're gonna use a <coughs> 3 8 a two foot 3 8 drive extension, a 13 millimeter shallow socket, and I got a one inch wobble extension up there because in case you can't get straight on it helps me out it helps you out Dang it. Dang it. in case you got a little bit of angle now we're gonna try this the other way we're gonna try this one way we got our cordless impact with our uh, 3 h drive adapter up here we're gonna see if it loosens up that if not we gotta pull out the new wall Sylvia kind of hoping it don't work yep. <laughs> but all right so let's go up here. There's one. It works, if It took a while, but it worked. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you would have had the axle going back in by now. Okay, uh, now we get the reach down. Get to the other one. Now this bracket will slide out this way. Get the, let's get that off first. And that bracket will slide out just like that. You see that? Yeah. Alright, take that out. Now what you're going to do guys is grab your axle from this point right about here and just start pulling out. And here we go. Here we go. Yeah, buddy. Look at that axle, guys. Look how quick and easy we got that axle out. Man, that is some kind of axle. All right. Now, you see this? <coughs> this is a little carrier bearing right here. Because the transmission is way back there, they had to add that extra shaft in there. So this little bearing 
is like a carrier bearing. It holds the weight up between there and it lets the dry shaft work. Now that brass, this right here, that goes in there like this, in there like that, and it stops that axle from coming out. So don't try to take it out without taking that out. Alright, let's go get our new um, axle and we'll be right back. Alright guys, here's our new axle. Let's line them up. <laughs> Look at that new axle. Yeah, buddy. Yeah. Alright guys, let's get this up and stop playing, playing around. Now, your splines. Your, these splines go into the transmission one way only. Only one way. If you put it in any other kind of way, you are going to damage jack transmission. So you want to pay attention to how... Let me stop playing with you guys. <laughs> all the... All the splines are the same, guys. They ain't got matter, all right? <laughs> all right, all right. Let's go. We slowly bring it through there. Now, for the next part, you might want to get up under the car to guide that other one in there. Get your other hand. I can't even see where the heck I'm going. I'm way off. Okay, once you get it into the transmission, like I got it, you should not have to force that in at all. If it is, then you got a problem. So what you want to do is slowly go in, and then you're going to have to pick it up a little bit over here to make sure that bearing <coughs> goes into that bracket. And then you might have to twist it to line up some teeth, and then, bam. Look at that. Look how easy that was, guys. No problem whatsoever. All right. Take your bracket. I'm trying to make sure you get a good... Put your bracket across it, just like that. Take your two 13-millimeter bolts, and you want to put start them in just by a few threads, just so you don't cross-thread it. Okay, there's one, and then go down here, and there's two. Now, take your um, two foot, three eighths drive extension, which are 13 millimeter, and you want to tighten both of them up. Now, that axle is locked into place. Don't try to pull it or you're going to pull the joint apart. So if you want to just test it, grab it from the outside housing out here and pull it and it's good. All right, we'll be right back. All right, guys, next thing to do is get the axle into the spindle. Now, remember, you can pull this out and just bring this over there. Now, if you live in a rust-infested area where a lot of rust is, you want to definitely, guys, take you some anti-seize and put them on these splines. All right, because this shaft will rust inside that spindle. I've had it happen. All right, so what you want to do is now take, pull your spindle out, turn it to get that axle in there. All right, once you get it in, go back to this side. Make sure your axle is going through. And if you want, this, this thing come with a new, it come with a new nut. Take your nut. And just put it up there just by a few threads just so to keep that axle from backing back out before you do the next trick. And the next thing is, and we took a long time, took a hard time to pry this thing, pry this thing down. So we're going to have to pry the lower control arm down and get the lower ball joint into the spindle. So let's try it. Okay. I said okay, and I still ain't got it. Slowly let it up. And it's going in. Take your hand, knock that up just like that. Take your nut and bolt, the 18, mil 18 millimeter, and put that bolt in there. Now, if that bolt gets stuck, don't say, okay, I just need a hammer. Take it out, look in there to see where you got to move. And what you're going to do is just maybe have to move that lower control arm just a little bit. Slid right in. All right, put your nut in on the other side. 
Get your 18 millimeter wrench, hold the nut, get your 18 millimeter socket, get your DeWalt on Titan. Now guys, um, if you decide to go out there and get a DeWalt, you can look right there. They have three settings. <coughs> Those are power settings. Number, if I put it on number one, the tool will go like that. It won't tighten up much. Number one. Number two, up there, and number three. <coughs> Be very careful because number three, if you hold on too long, you're going to snap that bolt, man. So, just put it on. Tighten it up. Perfect. All right? We'll be right back. All right, guys. We got this on. Let's tighten up this nut. 33 millimeter, half inch drive with the DeWalt. Keep going. Yeah, buddy. I know y'all like, Tim, how you know when to stop? I don't know, guys. It's something that you can just get with experience over years. If you ain't got it, don't do it. <laughs> All right. This one came with a little retainer here, which is why I'm surprised the other one not. And it's got like, like a castle washer. Like a castle, like a queen, a queen's hat, a king's hat or something. So what you got to do is... King's crown. What did I say? Not a hat. Okay, okay. So what you got to do is put it onto the nut until you can get one of the slots lined up with the hole inside the axle. You see that, Sibby? Huh? Yes. So you got to turn it. There we go. Line up right there. All right. So it comes with a new uh, cotter pin. Get the cotter pin. Whoops. Now see that how I got this stud in the way? Take it out. Go the opposite way. <laughs> like that, yeah, buddy. Take the top half and bend it over. Lock that down into place. That keeps the cotter pin from coming out. Now, if you want, you can bend that one over as well. But usually what we do is just cut that one. Right off. Look at that. Yeah, buddy. Done. All right. Turn it to the side a little bit. Now get our outer tie rod. Take your outer tie rod. It goes from the top down. Just like that. Put it in. Like that. It had a washer on it. So get your washer. Like We got to wait for Sivvy. We got to wait for Sivvy. <laughs> get your washer. <laughs> get... What the heck? Do I got the right nut up there or something? All right. Get the nut. Now, guys, sometimes when you go to tighten this up, the whole joint will spin. So what you want to do is take your hand and just put pressure down on that while you're tightening it up. So get our 19 millimeter deep. Hold it down. Tighten it up. Get you a new cotter pin. Now, guys, cotter pin is very important because if you're driving down the mold 70 miles an hour, and if that nut comes loose because you happen to be weak and you can't tighten it up, so that nut comes loose and it comes off there, this tie rod will come out and this wheel is going to turn one way or the other and flip your car over, all because of a cotter pin. So definitely make sure you put the cotter pin back in, and if it's rusty, get you a new one. All right, so stick that cotter pin in. Turn both of them over. You can turn one, but I can turn both. And that is done. All right, let's go get our tire, and we'll be right back. All right, guys, we got our tires on. We got our lug nuts started. Now, what you want to do is tighten it up in a cross pattern. You want to go right here, skip one, go to here. So you go one. If you count one, two, three, four, five, you want to go one, three, four, two, and four. <laughs> Wait a minute. Sivvy, 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 Sivvy. Sivvy, Sivvy, you, you, you gotta go. Get out of here. <laughs> All right. We're gonna delete that part. We're gonna go one, three, five, two, four. Just like that. All right. So, what you wanna do is start number one. Don't say what you're doing is 21 millimeter deep. You just wanna bring this one in just a little bit to, um, just to set the rim. Get it so it won't move. All right. Now, 
before we tighten them up, the reason why you're doing this is because just in case there's corrosion or rust behind that wheel, you want to make sure you put this wheel on flush, evenly. Because if you don't, you're going to go down the road and the car's going to shake and you're going to think you did something wrong or it's a bad axle and then you're going to go cursing the guy out at the auto parts store. And meanwhile, it's all your fault. So, we got that one set. So, we're going to go right here to skip. Now, you notice that, guys, when I tighten them up, let's loosen this one back. You notice when I tighten up, you see the gun go like this because I know what's tight. I can feel what's tight. And if I, can, and if I hold it from doing that, it'll snap that lug nut right off. So I, it's like I, can, can, I know the torque on this. This, guys, is something that you just know. See? I know, I know that's tight now. Great. Guys, this is perfect. This is car down, and this car is done. We'll be right back. Today we showed you how to replace a right axle on a 2007 Nissan Altima. If you guys have any comments or questions, you can post it below in the comment section or you can email Timmy at Tim at AstralAutoRepairs.com. Hope you paid attention. If not, watch it again. This is Sylvia from Astral Auto Repairs. If we can't repair it, nobody can. See you next time.